Masala? <laughs> Are you the manager? We should, uh, we should talk to you later. I'm going to go pee. Um, and uh, 
I wasn't sure what I was gonna do with my life, and then I found out about an open school night presenting the design um, uh, school at UCSB, and I went to the evening and heard about it, and it felt like a good fit. Um, took a class, and um, it fit all the things I like to do. And I've been at it ever since, and that was pretty, and were you right away trying to get into architecture? No, I wasn't. So I worked for a, a, an architecture firm right out of college, and um, I was working for them uh, and simultaneously volunteering for this nonprofit called the Sustainability Project. Um, and uh, we were a green organization trying to influence the um, built environment uh, and. Um, the firm I was working for, I just, uh, my personal value system um, was getting farther and farther from sort of misaligned with what I was doing for a living. And I finally got to a point where I just felt like I just, I had to do my own thing. I, could, I couldn't work for anyone else. Um, uh, I just wanted to follow my heart. And so I entered my office and that was 20 years ago. Nice. Yeah. Nice. It's interesting. That's, that, it's interesting that you say that. It sounds like you kind of got to a point where you kind of, yeah, just there wasn't any more choice. It was I couldn't figure out how the numbers would possibly work. Um, I was going to have eight thousand dollars a month in overhead, which at that point seemed insurmountable, yeah. and yet I had to. Yeah. So I just did. <laughs> Let's so so uh, G uh, G Cody uh, G Cody Q J Goldberg who spoke first today. He, he talked about some of the things. You, you get frustrated, and that's kind of what inspired you to go forward yeah. and do something. It sounds like yeah. that, you know that, that that creates that passion, and passion kind of pushes you to do something that you probably wouldn't otherwise do. Right? right? It's not logical. Yeah. That's very cool. Yeah. That's very cool. Now, um, so what you do is interior design. So um, residential, commercial, all of the above. What? How does that work? Yeah, we do um, about fifty fifty. Um, uh, maybe slightly leaning towards residential, um, and uh, we work all over the country. I'm, I love diversity in project types. I feel like that keeps our office um, thinking uh, in fresh new ways. So we've done a longer map and video arcade and pediatric dentist office, in addition to a lot of um, fancy houses. But I think thinking about design from all different aspects uh, helps keep us nimble and interested in what we're doing. What's your favorite of those? I don't have, I have a, um, I think that I'm a little bit like Dory in finding, <laughs> 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 I have some memory issues. <laughs> so I, I don't really dwell on the past and I, I'm always really excited about whatever I'm working on. So my favorite project is the project I'm working on. Have I met the others? I'm not sure. <laughs> So then, well, that's that's cool. You do so many different things, you know, being in, you could say, going from a dentist's office to doing, you know, a, a luxury condo, you know, um, to doing a commercial space, right? You've done commercial spaces, well, like commercial rental spaces, which we design as well. Uh, rental spaces. Rental spaces, right? Not really. No, what I think oh. when I'm saying commercial, I mean as opposed to residential. Got it. So all of those video arcade, hotel, restaurants, okay. bars, that's all commercial to me. Oh, okay. yeah, okay. um, and so what I will, with that, like, those are very different. They're, they're extremely different when it comes to, you know, like you said, a dentist's office to a residential home. It's just like those two. How, how do you get inspired? What do you do in order to get yourself in that headspace or to get inspired to, to do something different here for me? Um, well, this is where I have some slides for you. Um, so I, um, I, I'm going to move my chair. <laughs> photos of our work and uh, a little bit of an explanation about how we think. Sorry if I'm turning my back to you. Um, so for us, um, we root the concept and the setup of a project to the building and place. So for us, I think in this sort of um, Dory uh, vein, we're always starting over. So um, the, the thing that inspires us is the place. Uh, if there isn't already a building, 
um, the building itself, if there is a building. And so um, these are these are some of our projects. Um, that white house is where I live. Um, it's on Sobe Island, right outside of Portland. Um, and the house that my husband and I designed for that, he's an architect, um, was a traditional American farmhouse because it's um, American farmland. It felt appropriate. Um, uh, those, um, the one at the top is a um, very modern structure uh, right outside of Santa Barbara. And again, trying to develop a pretty restrained material for the project um, so that it feels holistic, it feels like itself. Um, the one on the right there uh, is um, in Stumptown, that's in um, Brooklyn. And um, it was an old fire station. And we really responded with our interior um, direction to uh, the building itself, to its vocabulary, to the place. We did a lot of research um, uh, of New York, of Brooklyn, what felt right, what did people need, and then what is this building. And my breakout session tomorrow is kind of an in-depth dive on that project. Okay. Um, uh, another thing that our office does is a lot of um, artisan collaboration. So we've got um, lots of friends who are glass blowers, ceramic artists, um, upholsters of various sorts, um, woodworkers. We design probably mm, maybe 50% of the things that go into our projects. So for us, it's a lot less about buying things um, than designing things and making them. Um, we believe in adaptive readers and enjoy infusing a new design vocabulary into established spaces. So basically, all of these were really problematic each in their own way when we inherited them. And we sort of gave them their identity. So if a building has its own strong kind of voice, we try to follow it and listen to it. Um, and sometimes it's almost more fun, particularly that one in the upper right was just really one of the most unattractive houses ever. <laughs> um, and so it was fun to give it, we could build that narrative. So rather than responding to what it was, um, we got to make up an identity for it, and it was fun. That, that one was an older one here in Portland, right? Is that no, that was in um, Anagansett, so oh. in the Hamptons. Okay. Yeah. Um, we balance modern, playful, and fresh design elements with a reverence for historic buildings. So basically, my the, those early uh, environmentalist readings and interest in green building kind of developed over the years to um, uh, not want to screw anything up. I just saw how quickly people uh, would move into a house, move out of a house, um, how quickly fashions pass, and so a, kind of a, a tenet of our office is to try to do the right thing for the building. Um, that said, we're not building period sets. We're not, um, it's not a historic replication. Um, so we do allow ourselves to get uh, enamored of trends and have fun with color and <coughs> But the, the sort of goal is that if everything comes out of the building, the building itself feels like itself, and it doesn't feel like it got remodeled in 2014 or 2019 or 1980, or it feels like it's the right thing for itself. Um, but we do like layering on fun things after. Um, we explore how people connect to their surroundings and take great pleasure in designing places they want to be. So these are some of our commercial spaces. This is, um, there on the left is Tusk, it's a restaurant in Portland, and the Hilo Hotel, um, uh, pizza place in San Francisco, and that's um, Parachute and then it's down in the lower right in South New York. Um, so, uh, yeah, we think about user experience, what's it gonna feel like to be in the space, um, and, uh, so this is just a quick, um, I'll, I'll go through this really quickly, but this is that Hilo Hotel, and I'll just talk you quickly through our process. Um, 
So here is uh, the before plan. It's a historic building in Portland. Um, when we first walked in, it was pretty uh, broken down. It was in the middle of demolition. It was this kind of dusty, uh, lots of concrete job site. Um, and it already had the name Hilo, this sort of branding concept of the space, but was at the same time elevated and had fancy things about it, but then at the same time have had a sort of a balance, so a yin and yang of the low. Um, and for me, the low was as soon as we walked in, it was a high low, but it was this broken concrete dust filled space. And I thought, there's something beautiful about it. Let's kind of preserve that and celebrate it and then fill it with things that are um, more on the high end. Um, so here was our space planning um, for it. Uh, there's the before. Um, so at the start of projects, we'll often do this kind of thing where we have a, um, a these vision boards that uh, we come back to over and over. They're kind of a roadmap for the project. So this was the. Um, our idea, how low is the balance of opposites, a simple raw shell filled with organic modern furnishings that are refined in form and luxurious in material. A soft and muted color palette reflective of the organ landscape, and this is also reflective of that kind of job site that we walked into the first day. A composition of organic materials, whitewashed brick, concrete, rich wood, leather, brass, ceramics. Playful and unusual furnishings and by interaction and encourage guests to engage in the space. So, so we wanted to create places that were kind of where you get shoved together, perhaps with somebody you didn't know in a kind of a playful way. So there's swings, um, of course, then reality sets in and co restrictions and the swings are all anchored to the ground so they totally don't swing, but we had ideas. And then uh, carefully crafted details design in collaboration with Portland artisans. That was also, um, didn't quite happen. I think most of the things got made overseas and we didn't quite oversee them, but this was our early concept. Um, and there's the finished space. So, um, um, so you see those rough concrete columns and not every single thing happened the way we designed it. We were thinking the ceiling would sort of look like that too. And anyway. <laughs> uh, and here's just one more quick one. This is um, a residential project. Uh, so this was a um, house in Estacada, Oregon, um, that uh, was originally kind of grand, I think, and then when we inherited it, it had become a puppy mill. So it was. <laughs> really destroyed um, and had holes in all the walls and um, it was on 540 acres. Our clients had a great vision for it. Um, uh, we, I won't talk you throughout the space thing, um, but lots of changes happened. Um, so this is, these are some pictures of before, particularly on the right there, um, that four car garage that you see uh, was really the best spot in the house and looked right up to the pool and the entire site is devoted to this driveway that came up to it. So we um, turned that into a family room that you'll see and relocated the um, garage up to the second floor. So that's uh, there. Um, so we, as soon as you enter the property, you go to the garage, which is more logical. Um, so here are image boards, kind of, this was our direction, this um, simple kind of black and white and earth tone palette, um, very approachable, comfortable, casual, um, uh, minimal material palette and then repetition of pattern. Uh, and then here's the house itself. So. Um, you can kind of see how much those early images really do end up that kind of, if you just get that eyeful of what you're seeing, then it, it translates. Um, you find that so useful. Um, so here's the house. Um, we liked 
to really think hard about everything. This was a tricky one. It looks so simple, and then figuring out how to get that stair to the pickets to fit into the arm of the sofa. We go to like seven different rugs that we sourced all over the place, and then had made into upholstery and lots of bits and pieces coming together. Um, more pictures of that project. This is the garage. Mm -hmm. So um, those wow. great beams are the, um, the garage door openers and then the, um, the glass uh, French doors are where the garage doors were before. It's like looking at Pinterest. <laughs> <laughs> you sit there all day and you get stuck. It's a rabbit hole there. It's awesome work, right? Yeah. Um, so, she just in time, but that's alright. Um, so, what is the kind of the favorite part of what you do for the things that you do? You, know, you're, you're, you go between the different styles, but is there any one thing that yeah. like, this is my thing? I like to choose the X, the tile. I love space time, so I feel like um, there's a right answer. Uh, so with space time, I just mean kind of um, we do a lot of remodels, and often um, spaces will be laid out so awkwardly and angled walls and things jutting out in front of windows and interior bathrooms that don't have a window and exterior sort of vague spaces that have all this natural light that don't really have a purpose. And so it, I just love it. I feel like there's a right answer. It feels kind of mathematical and tidy and it's just, I love moving those little lines around. For me, I know a lot of people still like that early process by hand, but I, I just love the freedom. I started out um, drafting by hand, and I remember having pencil that <laughs> probably none of you even do, okay. <laughs> all over my arm, and eraser dust all over the floor all the time, and like having to think long and hard about moving something over a few inches, and it's just so tiny on the computer. Mm -hmm. Not that you can keep playing around with it, there's no mess, and you haven't done anything destructive until you've figured everything out, and I just love it. And then I find all the decorating part much more challenging, because there's a million right answers, but I feel like with the space plan, you, it's just, you just get it right. And it feels good. <laughs> so that's what it's that's like. Accomplishment. Yeah. yeah. That's really good. Um, so, on, on, on any given project, you know, how do you have, do you, how much freedom do you have to be creative versus like sticking to what kind of instructions or anything that you've been, been given from the yeah. is, there, is there freedom yeah. that's there? I think that there is um, a ton of freedom. And I think at this point, clients really come to us with a, an open heart the vast majority of the time. And, um, They'll have programmatic requirements and say they need two bathrooms or four bathrooms or whatever, but um, we, we have a lot of leeway. I think the thing that probably constrains us the most and guides us the most at the same time is what I was talking about before, is sort of the building itself. So we'll look um, to the building for its existing vocabulary, what's good about it, what are details that are existing, who is the architect, when was it built, um, what are materials that might have existed at that time, and then that's what guides us. So those are probably the main constraints. And then the code requirements. <laughs> of course. <laughs> <laughs> the law. That's yeah. always the law. A factor to consider. <laughs> um, no, but that's really cool. I like that, 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 that you, you take an old space and you try and make it, you don't try to take away and say, we're going to make you current. You're saying, yeah. I want to make you all of you. Yes. That's right. That's really clear. You got it. Because then, and because uh, to your point, it sounds like you're trying to make it timeless. It doesn't mean. Yeah, I mean, ideally, you just think, wow, it was 1890s, and I was like, I didn't know that hoods were like that. <laughs> <laughs> but ideally, it just it's, it feels like itself. Yeah. 
love it. Um, so, what's a, uh, well, you've done a lot of design, you've done a lot of different projects and things, you've gone, you know, had your career where you started out working for someone and now you have your own thing, you've done that for a while, but, um, you know, our, this conference is all about relationship, I've said it like a million times now, so probably I'm assuming everybody knows that, um, but this conference is all about connecting and relationships and building. You know, would you would you say you had any relationships or, or any um, people that you have worked with that helped you kind of get to where you are, whether it is in your career or whether it is in how you go about doing what you do? Um, yeah. So I I really attribute um, uh, where I am like to my parents. I I. Um, as I mentioned earlier, I struggled in high school. I was a bad kid. Um, I um, I feel like I could very easily have wound up not in the place that I am, and I just have this kind of continued hold and a little support until I got on my feet. And it took a while to get there. Um, so that was a first factor. And then um, I'm not just me. So I called. Our office, Jessica Hilverson, interior designer, is originally Carnelian Design, which was a stone worn by designers and architects in ancient Egypt that symbolized nature into form. And I used to say that at cocktail parties, and I would see people's eyes just glaze. Deep. Flashes <laughs> <laughs> snap. But it's it really it's me in my bathroom. So I'm glad she was <laughs> How many people have looked back at a picture from like 10 years ago and you're like, why did I wear that? <laughs> why did I get my hair like that? Just me, just me. I'm going to look back at this one. Well, I'm going to look at all the It's a trend right now. It's a trend right now. But as long as it's still you underneath it, it's all me. It's me. It's all me. So um, we are we are running so low on time, so we're getting to like the, the you questions. You know, uh, who or what or would you say is your greatest influence? And you know, oh, well, I've actually actually gone over there. Uh, oh, I did some research and I saw that you have um, front house X U X O and uh, the one percent project. And I would love to find out a little bit about those. You, it seems like a, a level of giving back or something. Like that. Sure. Yes. Um, so I, uh, I do suffer from a little bit of serial entrepreneurship, um, and um, I love starting things and thinking about new things. Um, so I have 
right now a dozen or so um, nonprofits that we then disperse the funds to based on need. Um, and we've been able to award some pretty major grants, so that's felt good. Um, so, and now the screen says zero. So I think that's the end. <laughs> 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 it was five dollars. It was five, four, and three. <laughs> um, so the last question I'll ask, um, because it is rare, somebody's going to say something to me. Um, I do want to ask, you know, uh, we didn't get to say this in introducing you. You've been uh, featured in Life History of Living, uh, New York Times, the design special, uh, architectural design in Russia. I lost in Russia, so I have respect for that. I'm going to get props that I'm happy with you. Um, and, uh, and many, many other things. So you are, you're successful at what you do. Um, I, I've heard other people ask this question, so I would love to ask. Um, how much of that, how much of your success do you attribute to your skill and ability and your hard work? Um, how much do you attribute to that and, and your relationships? And how much do you attribute to that to, to just really love and time? Um, I don't know. I think that's a very difficult question to answer. <laughs> um, uh, one thing they say is if you do anything for 10,000 hours, you get good at it. And I have probably done the same thing for 50,000 hours. <laughs> so there's that. Um, and yeah, I think, uh, I think I could easily be on the sidewalk instead of in the office had I not had family support. So I did. Uh, and that was lucky. And, um, uh, but I'm also pretty darn tenacious. Uh, and uh, the, the guy in the, um, the uh, architecture firm that I worked for before I started my office used to tell me I was pushy, pushy, pushy. <laughs> <laughs> so, you were right that. That, was <laughs> that was It was clear. A dead vote, I guess. Awesome. Well, thank you for coming. Thank you for hanging out. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen.